have Norman ask yeah, questions from each. Oh, you want to go there to go? Okay, so Marcel. How's everybody doing tonight? Good. Yeah. 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 All right, so my name is Marcel Cartier. I'm also a hip hop artist currently based in the South Bronx. Um, I was actually born overseas in Germany. My father's originally from the U.S. Um, my mother was from Finland, but he was based in Germany at the time, and I lived the first 23 years of my life on U.S. military bases, whether Army or Air Force. I'm 26 now, so I've only been in New York for less than three years. I made the decision to come to New York for a couple of reasons, and uh, primarily, I knew that I had to get away from the U.S. military environment that I grew up around. Because already as a teenager, I began to be re-educated, and I had to go through a process of actually self-re-education and trying to unlearn a lot of the myths that I had been instilled with about the greatness of the United States and its government and its system. So once I began to do that, I began to see very clearly that everything I'd been told was a lie. Everything I'd been told about the greatness of, uh, of U.S. society was in actuality bullshit. So what I began to learn is that the system of, of capitalism manifests itself in its highest stage of imperialism all around the planet. And that's why the United States is always at war and is always sending its poor and working class people to carry out assaults all over the planet. There's, there's never a time the U.S. is not at war. And I think the issue of Palestine really exposes the ugliness of U.S. imperialism probably more than almost any other. Because Israel is just a colonial outpost, initially for the British, but now more so for the United States. So when we talk about Israel, don't get it confused. The entire structure will fall apart tomorrow if it stopped getting funded by the United States and Britain and the European powers and all the imperialist powers around the world. It would cease right. to exist. Right. It, only, it only exists as a means to divide the Arab world, to stifle the Arab revolution to stifle the porn oppressed people of that region from self-determination and from uniting and being able to have control over their own resources and their own lives. That's the, that's the reason for the Israeli state. And a lot of times, the issue of Palestine, we see it as um, it's like a demarcation in the movement over here. A lot of times, it exposes those who are, are mere liberals and, and are sucked into the, the liberal poison and those who really are principal revolutionaries. Because even in anti-war organizing, you'll hear people a lot of times say, well, just talk about Iraq and Afghanistan, but don't go into Palestine. Don't dare go into Palestine. You don't want to do that. But if we're principled, and we base ourselves on anti-imperialism and freedom for the people of the world, we have to talk about Palestine every opportunity that we get. And that's why I went on this tour. So I have to shout out, and I got so much love for Existence is Resistance because they have always taken a principled stand when it comes to Palestine. They have never sold out an inch. And I think that's very clear in what they were saying earlier in regards to uh, Zionism in, in, in culture and just wanting to have a, some kind of dialogue or what have you. You can't have a dialogue with hatred, with an ideology of hatred, an ideology of racism. There's absolutely no way. So. To say that Palestine changed my life is definitely an understatement. I mean, these were some of the most intense days of my life, probably the most 10 intense days. I mean, from the time uh, I had a flight via Belgium, actually. I had to go through Brussels and then from Brussels to Tel Aviv. I was on that flight on my own. I know we were going at different times. And uh, I had a layover in Brussels and, you know, I had the unfortunate uh, pleasure of having to travel from Brussels to Tel Aviv on El Al Airways. <laughs> Nancy put that to me. But uh, I didn't know, yeah, she didn't know what they were going to put me through. In Brussels, in Belgium, I, I wasn't expecting anything other than to get my boarding pass and be on my way, and then I had to prepare myself for, well, what, what's going to happen once we get into what's called Israel. But actually, in Brussels, I was put into an interrogation room. Well, I don't know if they call it that, but it's, it's the airline's room where they take people in one at a time and they have my passport for about 45 minutes and I'm thinking like man they, they're going to send me back <laughs> I'm thinking this ain't going to happen the, uh, yeah, the so yeah it, it was just a very interesting experience I had an airline employee stand with me the whole time at the actual gate before even boarding the flight um, the interesting thing is I had more problems there than I did in quote unquote 
Israel. Once getting to Tel Aviv, I think I was, was I the only person on the tour who didn't get stopped? Yeah. yeah. Actually, well, me and Em, I mean, they asked you a few questions when we went yeah. in. But it With me, but it was, it was. It was a breeze. Yeah. Right. That was co uh, compared to what you just went through. Well, I mean, that was Brussels. Right. But, I mean, actually, in Israel, it was nothing. Yeah, well, he bought, well, Marcel went and bought a big, I, I advised him to buy a big wooden cross <laughs> and put it around his neck so when he walks in, so that's what he did. We had plans for everybody. Yeah, my boy Ryan gave me the cross. Um, you know, so I mean, I don't know how much of it, I, I do get the sense that a lot of it did have to do with my whiteness, though, also, because of my skin complexion. Because this brother right here, we both have American passports, mm -hmm. but who are they more likely going to stop and, and ask questions and think is like, quote unquote terrorist in their eyes. You know, I mean, I walked up to him and I flashed a huge smile and I said, I'm so excited to be in Israel. And once, and once I did that, the guy the guy looked at my cross and was like, oh, you're, you're, you're here to sightsee, you want to go to Jerusalem? I was like, yeah, Jerusalem, everywhere. And he, he looked at me and he was like, oh, you also got to go to some beaches while you're here. And he just scanned my passport. And I, was, I was actually shocked because I had expected after everything I went through in Belgium that it was going to be more intense in Tel Aviv, but it wasn't. So, ended up, uh, you know, meeting up with the rest of the crew. Em was already there, Aim and Nancy. So, met up with them that night, and uh, I'm not going to give you a whole day by day because that would be too long to be here for the next three hours. But we eventually made it into the West Bank, and probably that was one of the most emotional moments um, I can ever recall, seeing the occupation wall. You can read all about it. You can see movies about it, documentaries. You can see all the pictures. You can have people even tell you about it, but to see it, for yourself is, 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 is an experience that you can't put into words at all. I mean, I, I definitely had tears coming down my face at that time. Because, man, when I, when I first came to Israel, I, I almost thought like I was in an uh, advanced European country to see the, the, the type of infrastructure and, I mean, to see the people as well. <laughs> the people are, I mean, mostly are Europeans. So I really did think I was in Europe, but then going through you know, that, that occupation fence and seeing what's on the other side, it's not, it's not the same at all. It's, it's the most acute oppression that you can probably ever see. I mean, if people just go to the state of Israel and they go to beaches or whatever, then you may never know. You, you, know, you won't know, but you cross that, that fence and you see what's on that side, you'll know for sure something is wrong here. And if you're not thinking, you know, what is it, then something's wrong with you, <laughs> to be honest, because it was just remarkably intense. Um, the people of Palestine, especially the children, were so wonderful, so full of um, just a, a humane spirit that's lacking probably almost everywhere. Everywhere I've been, anywhere, anywhere I've been. You know, you definitely don't see it in New York. You've got little kids. There's people in general coming up to you like, what's your name? How are you today? good day, you know, like things like that, just basic things that we take for granted a lot, and I mean, I didn't see that in Israel, and it's just remarkable how the people continue to have that kind of spirit, even when they have nothing, and they have nothing, and they're willing to give you every last thing that they have, just so they can share some time with you, share a moment with you, so, I mean, it definitely changed my life, one thing I remember me and Em were doing, um, actually, we were all doing a workshop in, uh, one of the camps with the children and you know we're trying to get them to write rhymes you know because hip hop is is blowing up out there they love hip hop so we're trying to get them to write rhymes and i think our exercise was to to ask these children for five words that mean a lot to them and i think each one of those kids you remember this yeah. each one of those kids what was the word freedom freedom for real it was every single child's first word that they put on that list so i think we ended up we call that group Korea, right yeah. <laughs> you know, so uh, that was that was one of um, just another touching moment. There's so many moments I can just uh, hmm. try to remember, but I mean, it, it, it was something that I'll definitely continue to do. I think it's an obligation, actually, um, of people such as myself and everybody who's here to continue to put in this work. It's not something that you can just do one time and say, like, I did my piece, so that's it. You know, until Palestine is free, we got to continue yeah. putting in this work yeah. every single day in whatever form. I mean, me and Em, we use culture, we use our art. Um, you know, whatever you can contribute, whether it's, it's writing or 